Welcome to our live web event. We're very fortunate to have with us today as our speaker, Jeff Yoshimura, who is the Vice President of Marketing here at Zora, key analyst at Accenture, and he was one of the early people at Salesforce.com. In fact, he was personally responsible for the progression of larger and larger rollouts. I won't go through the litany, but uh, it's quite a thing to have the first uh, account rolled out with a thousand users on Salesforce. Well, Jeff is now here at Zora. There will be a recording made, and we will send everybody here a, an email afterwards with a link of the recording uh, and the PDF of the event itself. What we're going to talk about today is how revenue is moving rapidly to subscription and usage models, and Jeff's going to give some examples of that. We're going to talk about how billing is not a practical back end. It's an essential part of the strategy. It actually helps you shape your product properly, it helps you be more competitive in the marketplace. Uh, how you can increase the cash flow and bring your DSO forward. How you can do billing on day one. No more need to have a service roll out for 90 days for free because you can't figure out how to bill it. You can start new services and bill for them on day one. And why people have so much trouble using their legacy ERP systems uh, and their invoicing systems for the kinds of services that we're deploying online now. And why it's so difficult for your general ledger and those ERP systems to do it. We're also going to talk about several case studies so you can see kind of a before and after of what several of our customers have gone through as they've rolled out uh, real-world SaaS billing. And we're going to give a quick demonstration. So there's a lot to cover here. We're going to try to keep the time tight. Uh, we will move at a pretty fast pace, but there is a recording. And if you have any questions, please ask them in the question panel. We'll get back to you. So at this point, I'm going to turn the time over to Jeff. And uh, Jeff's going to take us through the Zora story. Jeff, over to you. Thank you, Grover, and thank you, everybody, on today's call. We have an exciting group of people across enterprises, across SMBs, across B2B, B2Cs, people in media, people in tech, people in traditional business services, and a lot of folks that are just launching a brand new SaaS or online business. So we think this trend is really, really exciting in the marketplace, and that at the core of this, the world is moving to the subscription economy. And you're seeing this across many different fronts. You're seeing people say, why do I buy products when instead I can subscribe to a set of services? And really, Salesforce started this trend back in 1999 with this whole movement of on-demand. And you've seen a plethora of companies and services and traditional brick and mortar follow this trend of online subscriptions uh, through, through the web. You're also seeing this in spaces such as Dell and EMC, where you're seeing huge cloud computing divisions formed in these big, fast technology companies where they're buying companies, they're launching new services, they're optimizing data centers. You're seeing this across traditional industries like cars and automotive with the launch of Zipcar and their, their IPO. And then you see these in traditional kind of consumer services that we all participate in, whether it's buying clothes online or shoes online or buying movies online. So we're really, really excited about this trend that we're calling the subscription economy. And what we're going to talk about today are five things that we think all businesses must contemplate as they move into the subscription economy. The first is pricing. What typically happens is you start with a plan. Then you get feedback from customers that you want to move into new markets or you want to uh, create more flexible pricing for a different set of customers. So you start to, to add another price plan. And before you know it, you have multiple price plans, you have a la carte options, you're international, you have customers that uh, are on a monthly plan, others that are on an annual plan, you have some customers that have a subscription, and others that have subscription plus usage and overage. So you start to see that, that really pricing is driving the behavior of your revenue strategy. So internally you go out and you think about how do I, I create bundles to the specific audience? How do I create price plans? How do I do A-B price testing across what's working in a market? So maybe you roll out in a U.S. geographic market testing across two plans. One is $30 per month paid monthly. Another one is $120 a year paid annually. What price plan works? Maybe you try a promotion. So we see pricing as being one of the, the first things that all businesses must contemplate as they move to the subscription economy. 
The second thing is orders. Well, today, you can order through a website. You can have a second customer that orders through a sales rep through a CRM platform. With the plethora of mobile devices, you can see orders coming through mobile devices. And finally, you have partners. So you have orders that come through a customer portal or a partner portal. So the second thing that we see as, as really fundamental here in the shift to the subscription economy is that billing is what enables order management capabilities from anywhere. The third is change. In the old world, it was price times unit equals amount, and that didn't change. In today's world, it starts with an initial order, say 30 seats for addition A. There's a change order for an add-on of 70 seats that get prorated against the initial order. In addition, there's a unit like storage added. Three months later, customer's really happy. They upgrade their order, and they upgrade to addition B. And instead of having a one-year term, they move on to a 24-month term, of which a new contract start date starts from that day on. And they also add a new product that you just launched. Maybe down the road, they decide to cancel the product, but they want to keep the rest of uh, the, the products in use. So you have to cancel the product and you issue a, a credit. And then ongoing, there's a series of renewals, there's a series of change orders, and there's a series of amendments that continue to happen throughout this life cycle of a customer. So the third thing that we see is that Billing is what drives efficient change management, efficient subscription management here for today's companies. The fourth is cash. I think we all know that cash is king, and how do you bring cash forward? How do you reduce days sales outstanding, or DSO? So when you have automated billing, instead of waiting for your finance and accounting team to send bills out next month, why not get, get bills out anytime in real time today? How about launch promotions that get customers to pay cash up front, get them to upgrade, as well as continually to add new products and tweak and adjust your pricing to bring cash forward? And finally, the ability to take credit cards and put customers on maybe a starter edition uh, or a low-end edition that is credit card only. Low touch gives your company an infusion of immediate cash. So billing is what, what is driving here what, what we call cash flow automation for these businesses, moving cash up front, giving the company more cash to grow the business, to launch more products, to hire. The fifth piece is metrics. And metrics today are different than metrics of yesterday. Today it's about bookings, about aging, monthly recurring revenue, committed monthly recurring revenue. What's my monthly recurring revenue by product line? How do I use that data to decide that between my five products, products one and two are doing better than products three and four. How do I look at that data to say, I want to take this product and launch it in EMEA or launch it in Asia Pack? How do I understand the total contract value of my customer and how that is, is being driven uh, on a monthly, quarterly, annual basis? How do I use all this data to empower sales, a renewal team, sales ops, customer service to make business decisions around acquiring more customers and servicing customers better. So a lot of the people here on this webinar probably are saying, well, what else exists in the marketplace today? And why don't those solutions work? The first is, it's custom. Custom solutions 
They're built for the moment. It's built for a purpose. Somebody in management and product in IT has a requirement to build a custom system. Anyone who's ever embarked on a custom job always knows that six months, 12 months, 24 months down the road, the system never keeps up. It's a resource drain. It's not core to the business. Second is ERPs and GLs. These systems were built for the manufacturing world. There's a concept of them in order, but not of subscriptions. There's limited pricing and packaging flexibility. And typically there's a high degree of customization to make them work for an online business, a subscription business, a cloud business. And finally, there's payment gateways. Payment gateways were born out of the, the dot-com era for rapid payment processing, highly scalable payment processing, uh, but they're, they're not for subscriptions. There's no pricing engine. There's no invoicing. There's no ability to change. And the reporting is really a list of transactions versus a holistic view of the customer in terms of what's happening with that customer's subscription, the renewals, their add-ons, their change orders. So what we've done here at Zora is we've really studied the market and we feel that we have really understood the key requirements that are driving success for subscription businesses and businesses of today's online world. You need pricing, you need quoting, you need orders. You need subscription, amendments, and renewals. You need the ability to take in usage and rate it, bill it, and apply a payment. You need to have credit card processing integrated into the platform with taxation and notifications. And this all needs to be done on a multi-tenant platform built with modern software as a service architecture with online APIs, SAS MD type 2 certification, PCI level 1 compliance, and a monthly innovation cycle. That's our Z-commerce platform. That's our Z-building products. Z payments application. And we also feel that it's important to have a productized integration to Salesforce. So we also have a product that we call ZForce, where ZForce automatically allows for the power of what we do to be also done in Salesforce CRM, where they're using the sales cloud, the service cloud, or any other of Salesforce.com's products. We've also built connectors to ERP and accounting systems, whether it's NetSuite or Oracle, SAP or Great Plains. And finally, we have native productized integration to all the major gateways, PayPal, Chase Payment Tech, CyberSource, Lidl, and Authorize.net. As the topic of, of today's webinar was real-world customer implementations, I wanted to share with you three customer examples and the results that they're achieving. The first is BitGravity. They're a leader in HD and SD video on-demand services, streaming broadcasting, live broadcasting. Prior to Zora, they couldn't track usage. A lot of spreadsheets lack of history of what their customers are doing on an ongoing basis in terms of changes. And the billing operations was quite labor intensive. With Zora, they have the ability to send out invoices on the second and third of the month, or they can practically do any day of the month if they'd like, they just select it on, on certain days. And they have the ability to look at all of the invoicing and find um, revenue leakage, build scalable billing operations without having to invest headcount into building out those operations. And the result that they've achieved in working with us over the past couple of years is a dramatic increase in cash flow. Second example, example is, is, is Codesian. 
5 million users across the globe, recently merged and acquired with CollabNet. And they've really scaled out everything from their billing operations to their website optimization around showing pricing and packaging to doing free trials and taking orders. Prior to Zor, in-house billing system, engineers didn't want to work on it anymore. They couldn't build out new pricing models and do it on the fly. And they couldn't segment customers to find out the right price plan for them to create to sell to a new market. With Zor, we streamlined their entire operations around billing. They have a variety of pricing and packaging plans. They have a team edition and a pro edition and a whole bunch of a la carte options underneath that. And they have 360 degree visibility across all customers around what additions and a la carte options each customer has purchased. So in using Zora, they've been able to increase revenue by 25% by just introducing a new price plan. The last example is Quova, leader in geolocation data services. What they needed to do was launch. They needed a system to help them launch a new subscription product online. Their trade-off was, do I build it and continue to tweak my, my existing systems, or do I go with an on-demand offering? So with Zora, they were able to launch a new product. They can invoice their customers with the right level of detail. When they want to change pricing, they can bring it to market fast. And they were able to, to go live within 60 days and take their first credit card order, which before Zora, everything was invoice based. So because of this new launch, they've grown 30% online orders, shorten the onboarding of customers to minutes. So if you go to Quova.com, you can see exactly how they have optimized your website to be able to take subscription orders through Zora. And with that, I'd like to jump into a brief demonstration. If Jeff's going to start a demonstration here, so we're, we're going to go through this pretty quickly. It's going to uh, try to keep it under uh, five minutes in terms of the demo. You're going to see, uh, I would estimate, maybe 5% of the functionality. A full demonstration of Zora uh, typically takes us more than an hour in front of customers. So if you'd like a full demonstration, feel free to reply to the invitation you had to this. We'll set you up with an online demo. You can have open mic questions. Uh, but we do want to let you see some of the key features, particularly around pricing and catalog. Uh, flexibility, which is one of the biggest things our customers need. Because as soon as they get into the market, what they find out is, is their competitors react to their pricing tiers. They want to shift some features around. They want to change their packaging. They want to be able to change their product catalog online. So Jeff, back to you. Great. Thanks, Grover. So here I am in the, the Zora application. And the first area that I'm in is what's called the product catalog. So. The use case here is I'm a product manager, I'm a GM of a product line, I've been assigned by the CEO to go out and launch a new product or to launch multiple additions. So this is where I, I build the structure of um, how I want to price and package my offer. Let's click on this product called Z Planet for Marketing Professionals. And as I scroll down, we support the ability to roll out these plans in multiple currency. We also support the ability to have what's called rate plans. So the product here is Z plan for marketing professionals. And as you see here, I have three different rate plans. I have a corporate marketing edition, which includes a unlimited number of campaigns per month. I have an unlimited marketing edition and I have a basic marketing edition. When I look at the, the details of the charges here, I have the flexibility to configure the way I want to price. So this is an example of a volume pricing model. 
that starts off from one unit to five at a list price of $100 flat fee, and then I can build, build tiers. So from six to 10, it's a dollar. From 11 to 20, it's 75 cents. And everything up to 100 is, is 50 cents. I also have the ability to configure. Do I want to have this monthly? Do I want to have this quarterly, annual, semi-annual? Do I want to have this charge triggered on contract date, a service date, or customer acceptance? So these are all the things that, we, when we talk about pricing, need to be considered as you think about either your existing products and services or launching new products and services online. The second area that we're going to show you is a snapshot of a customer. Here's an example of a customer. On the right-hand side, I have metrics. I have all the billing and payment terms tied to this customer. I have the customer's credit card on file. I can see the subscriptions and any changes that have happened. And I have a complete history of all the invoices, payments, refunds, and adjustments that have occurred for any transaction. Now the second thing we talked about was orders. Essentially whether it's an order from a CRM platform, an order from a website, an order from a partner portal, or an order from a mobile device, that order would create a subscription in Zora where there would be a term, maybe a renewal term, the ability to have this customer on auto renew. And then below that subscription, I can easily see and quickly see that they subscribe to this edition called Z Planet Sales Edition, which includes some usage charges, recurring charge, and a one-time set of fee. We talked about change. I can see here that there was a change done. And when I look at this change, I can see that a auto renewal amendment was generated on the date of renewal. When I go to the subscription, we talk about metrics. You saw metrics at the top line at the customer view. We also give the ability to view metrics by subscriptions. So I can see in the MRR, monthly recurring revenue. I can see the total value of the contract across the specific charges. The last piece I'll go to is, is cash and how billing op operations is optimized. Under billing operations, I have the ability to generate an ad hoc bill run on the fly at this moment for any customer that's signed up. CFO's dream. Sign up a customer, get the order, build a customer, net 30, bring that cash up front instead of waiting in a queue for seven days. I also have the ability to put customers on a scheduled bill run of which will process through a series of rules. Do I want to filter charges? Do I want to email invoices out? And how do I want to schedule this? Do I want to have this daily, weekly, or monthly? So to bring everything back together, what we're doing is giving our customers the ability to have 
a single system of record for tracking customers, price plans are on, billing and payment terms, changes, how cash is coming in and flowing, and all the key metrics. And with that brief demo, I'd like to pass it back to Grover. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, we've had several requests, as we usually do during these, to show specific features. Uh, and I apologize, but the challenge is, is everyone wants to see a different use case. And that's why I'm inviting you, uh, if you'd like to see something in greater detail, like simple CRM, Salesforce integration, uh, NetSuite integration, which I have a request to see. Uh, we're very good at that. Um, have a request here to see the Z-Force uh, you know, uh, components. We have to do those one-on-one -on -one because people's use cases, we can never satisfy you with a quick demo because people want to see very specific things. Uh, we will um, uh, absolutely honor any requests for demos. If you want it at a funny time, we'll do it. Uh, if you're in a different time zone, if you need a large team, I'm just trying to get set people's expectations that it takes a while to go through the use cases. We usually ask you to tell us what you want to see up front. So at this point, we're going to do a quick wrap-up here. Um, what we're going to do after this event is we're going to send you an email probably tomorrow, uh, but it may be Monday. We'll send an email with a link to a PDF of all the materials with a link to a video recording this event. And actually, one of the things we're going to do is if you've attended this event, we're going to send you a link to a free trial because we've had people who say they want to kick the tires and look at it and see what the integration is like. Uh, we will go ahead and send a free trial to anybody. We have closed down free trials lately because the market has been so fast growing without them, but uh, for these events, we wanted to turn on the free trials. We're going to turn it on and send you a link. Um, we do have several questions here, but first what we're going to do is let Jeff give kind of a quick summary for people who may have joined late about who Zor is, and then we're going to uh, answer some questions. Great. Thanks, Grover. I think in summary, the topics we covered today were was pricing, orders, change, cash, and metrics. Those are really the key things, the key five things that all businesses must contemplate as they run in today's subscription economy. Uh, I showed a slide briefly before on who we are. Uh, most of you know that, that our DNA and heritage is from Salesforce.com, but we've rounded our team out with a number of executives across other leading SaaS companies, leading technology companies, uh, people with, with deep, deep billing expertise. Uh, we've been able to, to really um, grow our business 400% over the last uh, year. And the key thing that we announced uh, in November of, of this year that we, is that we raised a, a Series C with Redpoint Ventures. And we brought on Tim Haley, the original board member of Netflix, to be on the Zor board. So we're really, really, really excited about all this growth happening here. Uh, again, we're seeing customers across all major segments, different sizes and shapes. And that's just a, really a, a brief summary on, on, on Zora. You can obviously get all that information on our website. Uh, but I really wanted to thank everybody for their time this, this morning or this afternoon or this evening. And uh, pass it back to Grover for any Q&A that we'll conduct in the next 10 minutes or so. Sure. We're going to answer some questions here. We'll try to keep the answers pretty concise. Uh, the first question is, can you tell us what PCI compliance means and why it is uh, that it's part of the billing system as opposed to the payment gateway, for example? Great, great. So, so PCI compliance is, uh, is really the, the standard set out by the, the, the payments compliance industry, and uh, it, it's run by, by Visa. And uh, there, there's a number of different levels of PCI compliance. There's level one, two, three, and four. One is the highest. So what Zora is, is, is level one PCI compliance. You can find this on the Visa list. And, and why is that important and why is that in the billing system? First reason why that's important is that Zora has to adhere to the highest level of standards in terms of all of the credit card information and sensitive cardholder information that would flow through the system. So we have to encrypt our data. We have to use the highest level of encryption standards. Um, we, we have to have operational processes around how we run our application, our data center, all built in and all checked on a regular basis in order to continue to uh, meet the standards of, of PCI level one. Why is this important? Or why is this part of the, the Zora platform? The reason why this is important as part of the Zora platform is that this data gets encrypted and 
stored in the door platform. Why is that important to you? This gives you the ability to service your customers. So you're an online business, and today you do customer service through your, your help desk. Why not push some of those things onto the web? So if a customer has to change their credit card information, they can do that on the web. And what Zdor does is it serves up the last four digits of the credit card. It will serve up the expiration date. And all of the data is stored in Zora, encrypted, versus being stored in some outside payment gateway system, of which that's still used to do all the processing and some of the logic. But that's why it's important that that data sits in Zora, is because you have more control and ownership to do the things that you need to do to service your customers better. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, is, how many currencies do we really support? You said we're multi-currency. What does that mean in the real world? We support all currencies. And even more importantly for our customers, we give our customers the ability to customize the currencies that they want to roll out against the specific products and rate plans. So what that means is, is maybe you start with USD, Great British Pound, and Canadian dollars. Next, you want to move to different currencies, whether it's uh, yen, the euro, uh, the, the Chinese dollar. Uh, you can all do that through Zora, through point-and-click configuration. So you don't have to build another product. You don't have to build another SKU. But you can just add a currency and apply the currency against the rate plan uh, effectively. Uh, so that's why um, multi-currency is important. And uh, to, to leave behind here is that it's configurable. Uh, you can configure it, you can launch it when you want to launch, you can turn it off when you want to turn it off, and our payment gateways support all the major currencies that, that are out there. Thank you. I have a question here about do we support an online store? Do we have an out-of-the-box online store? So yes, we do support an online store. We, we call it uh, our Z-Store product. Uh, we also support the ability for, for customers to uh, use uh, our APIs and our toolkits to, to build storefront functionality right on the website. And that really depends upon what your use cases are. So we have examples of customers who use our Z Store. We have examples of customers who've used our API to be able to take orders and to build a really rich integrated experience. And we even have customers that take orders through uh, Salesforce.com sites, which is uh, their store, which is their web website product that allows for you to package up and, and, and take orders through through uh, Salesforce.com interface that is publicly uh, domain. So we give customers the flexibility to do what they want based on their use case. Okay, and I have a specific question. If there's a, if there's a quick launch, can we start with your storefront and then build our own API-based storefront, and does that break the model? Does, do, is that like an epoch event, or is it basically, you know, do we have to start our customers over if we switch the storefront? The beauty of this is you don't have to start over. The customers are, are stored in Zora and your storefront is independent of the data that sits in Zora. It's your customers, their payment methods, their subscriptions, their invoices, and their payments. So you can start with Zora and start building out your website functionality. And all you're doing is basically giving um, the pricing and packaging from our storefront and turning that off and then turning it on onto your website. So it's a very easy and seamless process uh, with no data migration from an implementation standpoint required to do that. Okay. Uh, I have a question here from a media company. They said, uh, the SaaS world's great, you know, but you've got a dozen products. In the media world, you know, we may have a thousand products. How do, how do you manage a product catalog with a thousand products? Do I have to enter them all in one by one in a browser? Great question. So you, you can use, uh, as you saw in Zora, it's really easy to, to be able to add and adjust pricing, um, add rate plans. Uh, I think uh, we have a lot of media companies that, that use us. Uh, you can go to our website, Reed Elsevier, um, based out of the UK, runs us across a couple of divisions. They have hundreds and hundreds of, of magazines and periodicals and journals. Uh, and, and really, this question will depend upon um, your use cases around your own products and pricing and how you want to manage that. Uh, so we can import it from another system. We can do it. Um, through point-and-click configuration. Uh, but the key thing there is, I think, to, to really look at um, the structure that you have today and how do you optimize it with Zora and package it for the new online world or the new SaaS world or the new media world because you might have a product that you say, 
I want to launch this product and uh, this product is just subscription based. Uh, but then you want to have another edition of that product that you push out to an iPhone. Maybe there's another edition that pushes out to a Kindle. So we'd have to understand simply kind of the use cases behind that. But we have plenty of media uh, case studies around how our customers are using Zora to, to optimize product pricing for a mass, big, global product list. Right, I think that's a good point because some of the things, usually when we give examples, we like to give examples, frankly, of customers that are a little easier to understand. But the fact is we have some very large customers with very complex product catalogs, and giving one example doesn't give you the scope of how big that can get. But still, I think those deployments still happen pretty rapidly, don't they, even with the big customers? Absolutely. What our goal is just to, to try to um, look at a, a set of requirements, look at the use cases, and to look at the value chain integration points and to make sure that we can work productively with any customer on whether it's a couple week implementation go live or if you're a large enterprise customer, uh, maybe we chunk it out into phases and uh, the goal is to, to get your first order within, within 90 days um, and then there's multiple phases for, for additional products that you roll out. But those are all things that you would work out um, in concert with our implementation team, with your team, maybe with your implementation partner, uh, but that is, is definitely a key thing that we want to do is to make sure that we work together in concert on something that's realistic, and something that's going to make you ultimately successful. Thank you. So I've got one last question. By the way, we've got about 50 more questions, and there's no way we're going to answer them all. Uh, we will get your questions answered. We've got a log of them here, and we will contact you and answer your questions. I got a lot of plumbing questions, a lot of you know market strategy questions about online billing, uh, a little bit outside the scope of this conversation. But we will get back to you. I promise. Um, so if we don't answer your question, I apologize. We will we will answer the next day or so. Uh, the last question I have is about the equivalent of payment gateways. Do I still need a payment gateway? Can I have more than one? Uh, would you tell me how we relate to payment gateways. Yeah, so uh, in, in the presentation we talked about uh, we talked about payment processing solutions, and they're, they're really geared towards you know doing you know high transaction volume processing, you know dollar transactions or hundred dollar transactions or monthly or annual transactions. Uh, you still need a payment gateway partner and a gateway if you intend to process payments, debit card transactions, do ACH transactions, or do wire transfers. Can I have more than one? Absolutely. So in our application, you can say, I want to have a relationship with PayPal for my U.S. business and Lytle for another business, or I want to do PayPal and Chase Payment Tech, or Chase Payment Tech and CyberSource. Uh, you have the ability in Zora to configure different gateways and to configure how you want the payments that are running uh, from your customers uh, into Zora. So you may say, I want my MIA customers to be on uh, on the Lytle gateway and the U.S. customers to be on PayPal. Uh, so these are different use cases and scenarios that we have thought about and we have pre-productized and configured all the rules and logic into Zora. So we've done the heavy lifting for our customers because the biggest pain with, with payment gateways is that there's no payment gateway that, 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 that's equal or alike. So what we've done is we've taken all of the stuff that they do really, really well and we productize it into Zora, so you get the best of Zora, and you get the best of PayPal, you get the best of Chase, you get the best of, best of Lytle and CyberSource and so forth. Um, so the answer is yes, we support multiple payment gateways, and uh, it's productized as part of our offering. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we're out of time. I do have many questions left. We will answer your questions offline. We appreciate your attendance. I still have many questions coming in. Will you get a copy of this uh, to this event? The answer is yes. We're going to send you a link with three things in it at least, uh, a link to the PDF of this event, the video recording, and also a link to the free trial. I have many people asking if they can get that link. We will give that to you. Um, so we will send that off. We appreciate your time, and we very much appreciate you, Jeff, for taking your time to do this today. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Grover.